Hey everybody, Corrections 101 here. Hope everybody's having a great day. So I had this uh, request by an actual UK uh, follower um, or subscriber wanting me to react to a video based on a video released by HM Prison and Probation Services of Manchester. Um, so Manchester is 200 well in kilometers for those in uh the uk it's 322 uh, kilometers northwest of london uh for those in the united states and freedom units sorry i had to steal that uh that's about 200 miles uh northwest of london i've kind of looked at a little bit of this video um i haven't looked at it in its entirety yet but um so, you know, the HM Prison and Probation Services, I think that's really interesting. Uh, you know, I don't want to take a ton of time on this video because, uh, you know, I want to get through it. But in my experience, and you uh, UK followers can let me know if this is correct or not, HM typically stands for Her Majesty. So I assume that's Her Majesty's uh, Prison and Probation Services. One of the things I really follow you know, I'm a musician to Outsider Corrections, and I love music. One of the things that I uh, really, really love is Her Majesty's um, Royal Marines that give just amazing, amazing performances over there in London, and absolutely love it. And so, uh, I assume the uh, in you know the HM stands for Her Majesty's, um, of course, because so much over there. And England, you know, revolves around uh, the Queen and King over there. So let's go ahead and get into this. We'll see any similarities, any differences. Uh, I'm not going to chime in too much, I hope. But uh, let's get into it. I mean, I'm not trying to sound sexist or anything like this. Uh, one of the things that I realized that um, the UK is very good at, um, like when it comes to Her Majesty's uh, Royal Marines, um, very good at marketing, very good at marketing. Um, they do a fantastic job at it. I'm sure this female is very good at her job. She seems, you know, from what I can tell, does her job very well. She's advanced and done very well, but man, she's a looker. And you add that English accent to it, man, it melts us guys' hearts over here in the United States. I mean, she's she's a looker, and uh, with that accent, that English accent, it's amazing. And what a car she's driving. What do you guys get paid over there? I start my day around quarter past five. That's when my alarm goes off. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to get into work. That gives me some time to sit in my car on the way, really thinking about what my day is going to entail and any sort of tasks that are going to arise and how I might deal with them. Usually when I'm setting off to work or I'm on the way to work, I'll be thinking about them things and how I can best manage it. Sometimes some prisoners can become quite irate and argumentative and I sometimes have to think about how I'm going to deal with them conversations and get the best possible outcome. Yeah, that was a pretty impressive tower there. Let's try to go back to it. I mean, and I sometimes have sometimes some prisoners could become. This is kind of the romantic thing about uh, the UK, and I'm trying not to get off talk of it, topic, but with France, the UK, that whole region over there, there's so much uh, romanticism with just some of the amazing old uh, things that they have over there, the old architecture. Um, that is a really impressive tower. I hope, I hope for the officer's sake that there's not stairs all the way up in that thing, because that's a lot of stairs going up there. I hope there's an elevator in there. I've, you know, I hope they've modernized it, but. I'm quite irate and argumentative. And I sometimes have to think about how I'm going to deal with them conversations and get the best possible outcome. So some, some days I'm quite anxious when I know that there's something coming up that might resort to some sort of violence between prisoners or... Yep, and and that's a common thing here in the U.S. too, you know. Um, 
you know the population that you have and you know there's you know an increased um potential of violence based on the uh census that you have there in the prison some days you know you're you're gonna know it's gonna be an easy day but if there's been a lot of stuff going on depending on who you have in there and who you're mixing and everything it could be a very very difficult day so uh, that's a common thing here in the u.s too you just you can have a lot of anxiety going into work because you know it could just be a shit storm at any time assaults on each other a lot of times i'm quite looking forward to coming to work quite excited i know if there's going to be a good day i've got some good stuff on it's a good team and everybody works hard on alpha wings so i like to be a part of that team and i like to know that we've done some good work sometimes i work 12 hour shifts on this particular day i'm working an early shift most prisons work with a changing shift pattern of around 39 hours a week and the length of shifts may vary i arrive at work usually around quarter past seven the shift officially starts at half past seven it's quite a long process to get through security with all the checks that you've got to do when you're in a rush and you're busy. So I've never worked actually in a state prison here in the United States. I've been through several of them as far as, you know, taking tours, going through them and everything like that. I know that uh, their process of getting through security can be quite extensive. There can be random checks and all that stuff, just depending on the facility that they're at. You know, I've only worked at the county jail um, aspect. And so we don't have this extensive of a process. I mean, um, we don't even get wanded or anything like that. But, um, you know, yeah, at, at a big facility, I can see why they do this because, you know, contraband is a major thing. And unfortunately, um, a lot of uh, jail or prison staff brings that in. But at a smaller facility like I'm at, you know, it's, it's not a problem. Um, but at a big facility, I can see how that's done and you know you've got so many things that you need to sort sometimes you feel like it's a bit of a hindrance but actually it gives me confidence that everybody that's come into the establishment is safe two things about that uh, search um it was really weird that it appeared even though the face was bored out a male gave the pat down to the female that wouldn't happen in the united states it would be male on male uh female on female um and that was kind of a shit search i mean a pat down that lasted that lasted an entire five seconds that was a uh terrible pat down search but assuming it's a, it's a, a supervisor that has um a lengthy time there and uh is very trustworthy you're you're probably not gonna be too worried about it, so i'm not too worried about it but you know, there has to be consistency with how you treat everybody, whether it's, you know, a frontline uh, officer or a supervisor. And there's nothing hopefully being conveyed in that is going to cause any harm. Walking through the prison onto the wing. It's yeah. yeah, this is an old ass prison. I mean, having bars like that. Um, and I've looked into this video a little bit more there. This is an old facility. They've done things to modernize it and everything, but all the bars and everything, it's you can tell this is a very, very old building that you tried to modernize it and everything. But um, usually in almost all facilities in the United States, whether it's prisons or jails, you're not going to have bars anymore. Um, they're going to be the you know solid metal doors. Um, they're just not going to have this. But it's really interesting. I mean, it's... On one hand, it's kind of charming. It's kind of a throwback to the past, but it's really, really interesting. The era, it is a big, old place. It's often silent at that time. You hear a lot of the gates clanging. If there's anybody shouting or any noises, they're very prominent and you can hear them clearly. So it can be quite daunting to people. But Yeah, and that's, you know, regardless if, if it's, you know, uh, the UK or the United States, I mean, everything's... Um, everything is within concrete and so any yelling any screaming any banging of doors even just regular cell doors closing it's very loud uh and uh you're gonna heal you, you're gonna hear all of it so you become accustomed to it you become used to it and climatized and it just becomes the norm for you so when i first come in i go up to my office i check any emails or any updates from the night before if there's been any incidents and i go to the staff room which is where we hold our morning briefing 
So everybody in that room. Just amazing how old style this is. I mean, um, seeing all these bars and uh, bar doors, it's just, it's kind of a throwback to the past. I mean, you know, you'd almost like, uh, in terms of us, like kind of Alcatraz out there in California, you know, all these bars and bars doors, um, you're not going to see this in almost any jail or prisons in the United States. Um, very old school. Um, but there's kind of something charming about it too, because it's, like I said, it's kind of a throwback to the past, but let's, let's keep going through it. In the morning, it's part of Airwing. There might be a few other people that get redeployed onto our wing from other areas, and that's what's imperative about the morning meeting. It's because all the information that's passed on is relevant to that wing. The book that I've got in my hand there is the observation book, and that is... Yeah, so that's very important here in the United States, too, that we do. Shift change is very important, especially if you've been off for... Let's say your shift has been off for two days. Um that it's very, very important to go everything that's been going over, you know, that's happened over the past two or three days. That way you're all up to speed on everything. Everybody's on the same page. You know, what incidents have happened. Um, you know, if there's any programming issues that certain inmates are on, you all have to be on the same page. And so um, shift change is very, very important. Typically, yes, uh, supervisors are going to have a log or a book or something like that to be able to give us a... Um, controlled uh message on what has happened over the those past couple of days it's where any incident or any information is recorded yeah he knows he knows what he does but i think his frustrations lie with the fact that so that anybody visiting the wing can read it and be kept in the loop of what's going on so i got promoted after and that's very important too we do that in the united states too so we have a general log book of all incidents that happened or you can go into the computer system and read incident reports and everything but you're so inundated with especially if you've been off like you know for two or three days shift change can be overwhelming because there's so much information that's happened uh especially with a lot of offenders that you need to be able to go back and say okay i need to refresh my brain on you know this log book or go into the system and see what incidents have happened or, you know, doctor's notes, this or that. There's a lot of information that you're taking in all at once. So it's good that there's a book um, at this location to be able to be able to refresh your memory on it. For 18 months, I didn't expect to be successful. I um, was hoping just to get an interview and just to get experience of that. So I've been in this role now for 10 months on Alpha Wing and it just keeps getting better really because every day there's a new situation that I've not dealt with so I know that I'm developing myself and that's what I need from a job. I need to feel like I'm getting better. I do enjoy giving the briefs because I feel like it sets the day. It gives me a chance to set my expectations and what I want delivered each day. To be fair, the briefings are probably one of my favourite things about the job because it just gives yeah, that's very important with, you know, shift changes and debriefings, as she calls it. You know, it's important for everybody to be on the same page. Everybody knows what they're doing. Everything knows what happened, you know, the you know, day before, two days before. Everybody has to be on the same page. And if you're not, it's just going to be a terrible day because no one knows what the other person's doing. No one knows, you know, what's happened over the past couple of days. So this is a, a critically important process gives us time to all come together and discuss any concerns or it gives us time to sort of have like a supervision time where if somebody does have a particular incident or situation they want to discuss, other people can offer advice and guidance with that. Yep. And then any tasks and jobs are detailed out to individuals of what role they're going to play in the day really, whether that be a moves officer or a cleaning officer or sorting out the applications from prisoners moving prisoners around the wing, around the prison, to workshops, to education. Do not repeat on London. I just wonder, I don't I don't know why they're blurring faces out. This seems kind of weird. Um, I, I'm, it's probably nothing, but it's just kind of weird. Um, I guess they just didn't want to be on the documentary, but I don't know. That's it from me. Have a good day. Yeah, we're about everywhere. But I'll be on. Um, so we're doing sending C Wing off to work and we're sending Jim off, depending on which one's gone. Um, just pass you that, miss. Thank you. 
Any prison that's going anywhere within the prison will need searching. They come down and they are given a rub down search and a wand in, which is will pick up anything that's electrical or magnetic that they shouldn't have in their possession. And this is done for safety, for them, for us. When you've they've done this, just stay on there so I can give you a so I'm not trying to give anything away about security wise, but hand wands, they they aren't quite accurate because there is so much metal in the jail and prisons that uh, they give a lot of false positives um, and just they just they aren't the best. The, you know, the number one thing that you can do when you're searching offenders in a jail or prison is a hand search, a pat search. Um, you know, wands, they do serve their purpose. But like I said, there's so much metal in there that it, it just, they aren't, they aren't the best. Get rubbed down before you get off, all right. Having a cat function, it's, it's imperative because we want to make sure everyone remains safe. And, and the prisoners are used to it. So they're very, you know, happy to be involved and compliant. And it's just part of the day-to-day -day running of the prison, really. Thank you. Thank you. Doing a normal Yeah, she seems like a very capable officer. I'm I'm gonna give her that, but that pat down search was shit. But look, I've never had to work in a prison with, you know, I don't know how many people they have there with 800, 900, 1000 I don't know. But uh that was a really fast pat down search. Um, and again, it's really, really weird here in the United States. We would never have a female patting down male uh, offenders. We would never have a, a male patting down female offenders. That just doesn't happen in, happen in the United States. It just never would happen. Down search on the wing. Well, I, I can't say it would never happen if there's an emergency circumstance to where uh, there was only a female officer to search a, a male offender um, under exigent circumstances. Yeah, they can do that. But in a controlled environment like this to where it's it's um everything is planned it's uh routine this wouldn't happen in the united states so uh it's just different i'm not saying it's wrong it's just it's different i think it's i i find it interesting you suspect somebody's got something i found quite a few things whether that be a stanley knife recently in someone's pocket it was, they hadn't been used, but there was suspicion it was going to be used, which is a good find. And it, and it makes you feel confident, again, in your own abilities that you have seen or had a suspicion. And actually, your suspicion was right. You've acted upon it in the right way. And that's then out of the system, really, and not going to be used to harm somebody. As a supervising officer, you supervise the shop move which is when all the prisoners are going from their residential area to the area they're working so whether that be the kitchens the bakery education the laundry they just can't get over that accident. they will supervise the prisoners on the route up to their workshop or their area of work more education just to make sure that everyone arrives safely and everybody gets to the area they need to be really and there's no one that's gone off in a direction they shouldn't have done prisoners have arrived in the bakery they have an outside contract making bread for an outside agency and that's sent out but they also make some desserts pastries for the prisoners inside with their meal times I quite like the fact that it's not brought in from outside and it's something that is made within HMP Manchester and it's provided to the prisoners. The lads seem to really enjoy it. There's a lot of perks of being in the bakery and it's time off the wing for them as well, something to focus on. They're learning new skills. They're getting used to working. Some of the prisoners that come to prison have never worked and never had a full-time job. It gives them some consistency in their life, a routine. They get to deal with people around them like you would in a normal workplace. So I agree with that. I think yep. they learn skills such as teamwork and a bit of independence, a bit of initiative. And, you know, if anything needs completing, they learn how to do it there and can work under their own guidance. Well, under their own guidance, uh, you can see an officer there in the blue. Uh, they're not really working under their own guidance. You're always going to have a correctional officer there overseeing what they're doing everything's gonna be accounted for as far as especially anything metal like a knife um just anything that's metal um 
but uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely a privilege for people to be able to work in a bakery or in the food kitchen or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, usually officers run a tight ship. I mean, you screw that up, you're done. Every day on Alpha Wing, there's a period in which the prisoners come out of their cells and they can. So here we get into the the whole uh, alphabet, Alpha Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Frank. There you go. I mean, that's the, you know, just the alphabet that we use. Associate with each other. No, really, you want to mess us with other <laughs> Yeah, you paid him to say that. <laughs> they can get any cleaning done, any laundry done that they need to do. And part of my role, and I guess as a prison officer, is to engage with the prisoners on the wing and just build that rapport and build relationships. And especially as a supervising officer, you're sort of the point of call for any issues that may. Yeah, it's really important to uh, build relationships and everything, but this is really, this seems a little chaotic just to me and my experience. I mean, you have all these uh, offenders in normal clothes, on stairs and everything. Um the last thing you want to have to do is fight an inmate that's on, you know, cast iron stairs. You don't want to do that. Someone's going to get really hurt. I absolutely hate jails and prisons that have tiers like this that are built up instead of built outwards um, on one level because nothing good happens on stairs like that. You know, someone's going to get injured, but uh, just seems like a, you know, and I don't know what kind of prison this is. And maybe for more trusted inmates, I don't know. But um, just seems really interesting that there's so much, um, I'm not going to say chaos, but um, interweaving between inmates and um, corrections officers because they're just, it just seems like uh, not a ton of structure. It's just really weird. Need escalating. <laughs> So some of the prisoners on here will be new to prison, potentially for the first ever time, potentially as a return, which both come with quite a lot of stress because if it is your first time in prison, it's a daunting experience, it's intimidating, anxiety levels are probably high, they're not sure of the processes or procedures. The prisoner in question is asking about employment, so he's telling me that he's got skills and so that... he's asking about really high, they're not sure of the processes or procedures. So that freaks me out right there. So she and this guy here in the blue, they're around this railing where it's, if you go over that railing, it's a long ways down. Um, that, that doesn't seem very safe to me. That wouldn't exist here in the United States. Um, we would have, you know, fencing or something that goes up to make sure that an officer or an offender isn't tossed over that railing. Um, uh, that's just not safe. The prisoner in question is asking about employment. So he's telling me that he's got skills and qualifications which he would like to use within prison. And it's a positive thing. It shows that they're wanting to improve and they're wanting to be rehabilitated. This prisoner has been on Alpha Wing for as long as I have been on Alpha Wing, which is coming up to three years now. I've got a really, really good relationship with him. And in my opinion, he's just ready to be released because he's been in prison for so many years. I think he's close to 40. He's been in since probably 19 years old. He goes above and beyond every single day, anything that I want him to do. And I mean, years old. Look at these railings on these different tiers on the third, second, down. I mean, if you got tossed over that railing as an offender or an officer, you're done. Um, I don't like that setting. It seems like a huge security issue. I I don't understand why they haven't thrown up fencing or something like that to where someone can't get tossed over those railings. Seems very, very dangerous. Goes above and beyond every single day, anything that I want him to do. And, you know, it's, it's hard work to get to a stage where you do feel that you can trust prisoners and that there is confidence and they can trust you. They do sometimes see you as somebody just in a white shirt or a position of authority and it's hard to build that relationship but it's key to making sure your area of work runs smoothly and every day runs smoothly and people remain safe and that rehabilitation is possible cheers thank you yeah you the worst case scenario is people returning to prison and that's ultimately every day is what we're trying to avoid yeah people leave I say, I hope I never see you again. I agree. Hello. Yep. Both fingers that all the time. 
a lot of prison officers that come into the job now and start on an apprenticeship and they will have mentors or experienced officers guiding them for their first 12 months of probation as a prison officer. So this is my ex-mentor coming to speak to me to ask if I will speak on the graduate scheme. I forgot, and then this morning I was like, I need to make sure he knows I'm going, so I just thought... Right, I'll, I'll see you, yeah, Bob. I'll be there, I'll see yeah, you. after seven till half eight. After seven till half eight. Yeah. Yeah. No pressure, just chill. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I haven't actually sat down and met them properly. Like, any Another of them. ace as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right. looking forward Proper to it. Proper ace. So, so they meet every two weeks for supervision and every week for individual one to I think it's really important to have that support and have that time to be supervised um, and bring up any concerns that you might not want to bring up with your team. You might want somebody who's completely impartial who doesn't know the prisoner or doesn't know the staff member that you might be talking about. Lunch is around 11.30 to 12 o'clock. The prisoners serve the meals. It comes over from the kitchen. The food is made by prisoners, it comes over to the wing and it's served by the prisoners behind the servery. Yeah, so a correctional officer in every jail that I've worked at, so inmates aren't going to go through a line and get their food. So all trays are going to be prepared. We're going to hand them out in the jail facility. However, in a prison, they do go through a lunch line. They're giving you a tray, not paper plates, anything like you're going to see here. They're given a tray. They're going to be given all the uh, food groups that they're going to be given in the certain areas. Um, but yeah, that is similar. But it's it's really, this is, um, uh, it's really weird seeing all these guys in street clothes. Uh, typically, that doesn't happen in jail or prison in the United States. There are some prisons uh, on the state uh, level that do allow, let's say, they're on work release and uh, stuff like that where they do have street clothes. But most prisons and jails in the United States, you're going to be wearing uh, jumpsuits. You're going to be wearing the stripes. You're going to be wearing, uh, you know, the oranges, whatever it is, uh, Bob Barker sandals. Um, you're going to be wearing that stuff. It's not going to be street clothes. So I think this is really interesting. <laughs> Make your way down, grab your food. So return to the cells for a period of about an hour or two of a lunch so that staff can get their lunch. And then again in the afternoon, another domestic period is run or gym or work. Or... Yeah, and that's really important. You know, uh, you know, get their food, go back to your cells, whatever it is. Staff needs those breaks. You know, we need time to, um, to be able to you know, get together with our other fellow officers, be able to get on the same page. Hey, this happened with this offender. This happened with this offender. Um, this is building in this pod or this wing to be able to kind of just communicate what's going on. Plus, we need that mental relief um, to where we just need time off to where we're not under the stress. Because when you're on a wing or in a pod or on the floor, whatever term you want to use, it's a high, it's a very high level of stress, just 100% of the time to where, um, you know, after whether it's an eight or 12 hour shift, you're exhausted mentally because you are on this heightened aware, you know, heightened awareness just all the time. So uh, those breaks for staff are just as equally important as to uh, inmates. Education. HMP Manchester is a very, very large prison with around 750 prisoners now it's very loud it's noisy it's busy it's yeah so 750 prisoners in this facility um that's you know that that's a large facility um and this is this is you know you can tell just by looking at this it's a very large and old facility everything is brick mortar um and everything is going to be very very loud in that facility so um yeah active there's a lot of things that are going on that need dealing with every day it can be quite daunting sometimes you get a feeling when you when you think something's going to happen and nine times out of ten it's right it's like a sense that you develop you notice i guess something out of the ordinary there's a lot of truth to that so i mean when i walk into my jail or the jails that i've worked in, in the past you have this you have this feeling like you can feel the tension in the air and that comes with time uh, you can also tell by just the 
body post or the uh, body language of the inmates, um, what kind of shoes they have on. Uh, and there's a lot of little things that you can look at to, oh, crap, something's going to happen or the high potential of things are going to happen. Um, it's, it's definitely a learned skill that you have to pick up that something could happen. But, you know, you always um, can reach this pinnacle to where just walking into the facility, you have an understanding that something major could happen anytime because you can just feel it. It's, it's, it's a really interesting trait. Prisoner behaving a certain way, and that comes with time. It comes with being in the job and being involved in incidents. Yep, hundred percent agree. Working in a prison often has Wait, its downsides, just, and being involved in incidents. I just took a whole loaf of bread. He took a whole loaf of bread. Working in a prison often has its downsides, and one of them would be when a serious... I don't know what that was all about. He took a whole loaf of bread with him, that offender. That that was weird. I don't I don't know. Is, is commissary also handed out, or do they hand out a loaf of bread to the, you know, a leader of the inmates in the wing to hand out? I don't know. That was kind of weird. This incident has occurred. As a prison officer, you are expected to respond to these, and you'll first be alerted to that by the sound of a general alarm. And that can be anything from a fight between two prisoners. It could be a staff assault. It could be a self-harm incident where, where you need to make sure you can get staff there to the scene to help you with that. It can be quite daunting when you hear the alarm going off and you do worry about your colleagues, about yourself as well. But you need to switch on quickly and you need to work out what you need to do. Yeah, we have, you know, all staff available kind of alerts over the radio or over the loudspeakers. Um, and then everybody comes running and it, it, it can be very, very daunting because you don't know what the situation is. You don't know if it's inmates fighting. You don't know if it's uh, an inmate attacking a, uh, an officer. You don't know if it's a self harm, harm incident. There's a lot of, um, you know, the same with what she's saying. You don't know what it is, and uh, there's a lot of anxiety in it. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but uh, when that call goes out, all troops come, and it can be quite impressive, very, very overwhelming at times. You'll do your control and restraint training, which provides you with techniques and skills to actively manage a situation where you might have to restrain a prisoner. A lot of the times, the prisoners are compliant. See, let's sit down. And even if they're fighting with each other, when staff arrive, see that one we'll stop inmate them. just went into that cell, maybe a two-person cell with a whole loaf of bread. Don't know what that's all about. Um, maybe if uh, a UK uh, prison officer can maybe put in my comments what that's all about. I think that's really interesting. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about fighting and they won't harm you but often you can get caught in the melee of an incident and be injured when you're managing an incident it's important to not rush in there straight away you need to take in the entire situation an overall view of what's going on and don't get tunnel vision uh, i kind of disagree with that i mean i understand wanting to take your time and to go through everything but um the number one thing you can do as a corrections officer is to have an overwhelming response, an immediate response. Um, kind of like we have seen in the United States with uh, mass uh, pew pews um, or school pew pews. The number one thing you can do is overwhelming uh, response right off the bat. No questioning anything, not waiting, not doing any of that stuff. Um, it's just you know, attack the uh, problem, you know, head on straight away. Often prisoners might play a fight, trying to make it look like there's a fight to hide or mask something else going on where somebody else has been assaulted, let's say, or yep. an incident's going on. It happens. Absolutely. You feel a bit guilty sometimes yep. because you've missed it or you wish you could have responded a bit sooner. That guilt can last a couple of days or weeks, really, because I don't like the thought of anyone being harmed. And it's all about learning. It's all about learning from any experience that you've got that you can take forward and deal with things better next time you know? yeah there's a lot of truth to that so you know at the fields at the facilities that i've worked at so um after a major you know or any use force incident you know we uh, go through the de uh, debriefing process 
we review video, we do all that stuff. And then, um, you know, you learn things, um, you know, what you did right, what you did wrong, what you could do better next time. Um, but that stuff sticks with you, you know, it's, it can be very, um, um, mentally challenging and it can stick with you in the future. But, um, you know, what you want to do after a use of force incident is to learn from it, move on and trying to get it out of your memory other than what you're trying to learn from it. You need to realize you're not going to stop every incident that happens. You can't be there for everything, but all you can do is respond the best you possibly can. After the prisoners have been served their meals, they are placed within the cells. We then have a last minute brief of how the day has gone and any tasks that need to be completed the day after. We count to make sure we've got the right amount of prisoners on our wing and they've all returned from their area of work or employment or education. I sort of finish off my few emails, tidy up the office for anything that's left over, leave a note for somebody who's on the next day or for myself of tasks that need completing tomorrow. And then we walk to the gate. I think if you were thinking about becoming a prison officer, you would need to be a people person, definitely. You would need to be willing and eager to help everybody that you come across. I agree. And I think it's also yep. important not to be judgmental. Some people have had the worst upbringing you can imagine or the worst start to life. Not that it makes an excuse of why they've committed crime or they've ended up in prison. You can help somebody rehabilitate just by standing and listening to them talk about certain things that have happened in their previous life. I was born on a council estate. I left school with GCSE Ds um, in maths and English. I had to go back to college to do them again before I could apply for university. I had a good upbringing. I didn't have the, you know, the best start, let's say, to life, which a lot of these men in prison probably can relate to. And yes, their paths gone very different to mine. But what I like to tell them is that you need to use some things in your past life or things that I guess weren't your the best start in life to fuel you instead of holding you back. And all the skills that you learn from working within a prison are easily transferable into any job you ever want to go into. I definitely believe that working as a prison officer stands you in good stead for any job that you might ever find yourself in or come across or want to apply for. I agree. Yeah. So there you go. Um, just a few takeaways from it. Uh, there's not a lot of things different. I think uh, a few things that, st that stood out to me about um, HMS prison and probation services in Manchester. Um, their buildings are just old. I, I know they've um, you know, renovated stuff. Um, but uh, another thing that really stood out to me is females doing pat downs on males. And uh, males doing pat downs on females, uh, you know, the cross uh, pat downs of different sexes. That was really weird to me. We don't do that in the U.S. Um, like I said, unless it's exigent circumstances to where there's just been a fight or a stabbing or something like that. A female is the only one to search a male. Then that would be fine. But um, for general searches, that just doesn't happen in the United States. Um you know, I HMS or Her Majesty's uh, Prison and Probation Services, whether it's you know that or um, HMRM, you know Her Maj Her Majesty's Royal Marines. I mean, the UK is a very good at branding, very good at branding and being able to put out just wonderful videos uh, to promote their brand, um, whether it's good or bad. And I'm not saying this is good or bad, but man just what a good production value that um they put on here um overall i think they do a lot of things similar to us they do some things that are uh different from us here in the united states um not saying any of that's good or bad or negative but hey i would love to have some of you here uh in the uk that uh are familiar with the uh, jail and prison system there um give me some insight on it. Um, I thought it was very fascinating. Um, this prison, it just seems very, very old. I just, I, I guess one question I have, um, 
for the UK is why why are you not building new prisons? Why you know are you not building updated prisons that seem safer? I think my major takeaway as far as safety for officers and offenders there were the different tiers to where you have railings to where an officer or an offender could get shoved over the railing and they go down two, three, four, five, you know, flights of stairs. Um, the, it just seems extremely dangerous um, with that tier system. But let me know what you think in the, in the uh, comment section, like share, subscribe, hit that bell button because you're going to know when I go live or do another video. Uh, I would love for some UK people uh, responses. Let me know where I'm right, where I'm wrong. Uh, give me some insight. I would love it, and I would like I would love to make this kind of um, um, you know uh, some new content on uh, some UK stuff. But thank you for the subscriber that sent me the, sent me this uh, a video. I enjoyed it. Love you all in the UK. I hope everybody has a great day. Crexons 101 is out. Love you.